Okay, we're talking about my experience as a kid in uh, in Java during World War II when I was interned by the Japanese. See, I was interned, we were interned, a uh, whole bunch of people, um, mostly, uh, mostly Dutch, all, well, anyway. Um, at the time, let's see, when I first went into the camp, oh, it must have been in 1943 or 44, I don't remember, so let's say it was 44, um, no, it had to be 43, so I would have been 12 years old at the time. Actually, I, I speak of this camp as, as there were actually several levels of uh, internment. Uh, when I first went into the camp, I was a little younger than that, and um, I went in with my mother. Uh, my father had already been interned at some other camp um, by himself, so my mother and I went into this camp <clears throat> and were in it for, I would say, about a year, and then uh, the Japanese decided for reasons known only to them that um, all male children over the age of, I don't know what the cutoff date was, but it caught me, um, you know, and, and from that age and up had to go into this camp by themselves. Um, so that's when I went off into the final camp. And that one I was in for about a year when the war ended. As far as what it was like, it was um, what they used for a um, prison was a um, old, old, it was a Catholic, um, it was a church and um, what do you call those things? A convent. A, con a church with a convent around it. So there was a central building that was the church and there were these. There was a two-story structure that went, was around uh, around the church that uh, contained individual rooms, uh, lower floor and upper floor, where I assume uh, the uh, priests and nuns or whatever was in there uh, were living. We slept on the floor. In well, we had mattresses, but the mattresses were on the floor. Um, side by side, not a whole lot of room when the mattresses were rolled out. During the day we rolled them up so there was a little more room. You could sit, you know, and do whatever we did, which I don't recall was a whole lot. Um, at night when the mattresses were rolled out, there was a little aisle, maybe so wide, between the foot of my mattress and the head of the next one, so that people could go in and out. Um, I had to go to the bathroom if they had to get out during the night. We had a big problem, I remember, with bed bugs. Bed bugs like to live in mattresses. They do very well in mattresses. And one of the things we did uh, during the day was to go through the mattress and, you know, all the little creases and look for bed bugs and smash them, try to keep ahead of them. Yeah. which we couldn't do. You always woke up with bites and itches and what have you. Um, Food-wise, uh, I don't recall the details. There wasn't a whole lot. I got extremely skinny. I got so skinny, as a matter of fact, that just sitting down on a hard bench uh, caused my butt to become bruised. Uh, but we did go out and were put to work in uh, in the fields, you know, weeding and uh, cleaning up uh, vegetable gardens, so on and so forth, uh, which uh, provided an opportunity to steal food. Of course, um, if you got caught, you got beaten. So. You had to be very careful. Uh, well, that went on. <laughs> oh, yeah, another thing that's interesting. One of the things that they uh, they gave us, 
ration-wise, and you know you have to remember these are these are kids uh, not even your age. Uh, the oldest ones, uh, there was a well. The oldest kid was uh, maybe seventeen or eighteen. The oldest kids, plural, seventeen or eighteen. Anyway, um, one of the things they gave us was um, a ration of sugar and coffee. You know, think of how many kids your age drink a lot of coffee. Uh, but anyway, that's what they gave us, and somebody figured out that you could take this coffee, put it in a little can, pound it in real hard, oh, the can had those small holes in the bottom, which you, you, you uh, put the holes, you know, with the nail, uh, small holes, pound the stuff in, put water in it, and let it drip, and what would come out would be a real, real thick, um, almost syrupy coffee extract. It's kind of like making a, a making a, a you know an espresso drink here only use cold water. This liquid if you mixed it with the sugar you could make a real stiff um, like foam and uh, we used to you know guys would walk around with a bowl holding a bowl and with a fork and be whipping this stuff and beating it and beating it and beating it, beating the sugar into it. Then you ate it, and of course, <laughs> talk about a jolt of sugar and caffeine, you wouldn't sleep for days. <laughs> All this went on for about a year, and then, um, of course, we had no idea what was going on in the outside world, right? No radios, uh, no news, no nothing. And uh, we knew there was a war going on, but, you know, except for a few rumors here and there. We had no idea what was happening. And then one day a plane flew overhead and it wasn't a Japanese plane. Lo and behold. And that's how we found out that the, uh, the war had ended. So then the next thing was, um, <clears throat> for, for, you know, for all of us, uh, trying to find our, our parents who were in a camp uh, it, all, this, all these camps are in one town, so it's just a matter of walking across town back to the other camp and um, getting back together with my mother again. So we're back in this camp and um, <clears throat> now we have a situation where the, the Indonesians, the natives of the country, Indonesia, which is where all this took place, were uh, in rebellion against the the Dutch, who before the war had been the occupiers of the country. So they were out there shooting and killing, and all we and what we had for protection now was ironically was the Japanese who had previously been our jailers. Only now they're, you know, instead of having their guns pointed into the camp. They pointed them out to protect us. Hell of a situation. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, I don't remember how long it took, but eventually um, Allied troops showed up. Uh, they were British, British troops, British and Australian, I think. These people protected us and <clears throat> helped us to move out of this camp to another one and eventually onto a ship and back to Holland, which is where we resumed a more or less normal life. <laughs>